speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounce the cheese. Tripping me on the tongue. But if you bow that as many of our players do, I see the town prior to stroke my mind. I do extol the air too much of the hand class, but these old men. But in the very torrent tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must require him to get a temperance and make it seem. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig pated fellow tear the passion to tatters, the very rags to split the ears of the grandings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable gun shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped for all doing term against. It out her its head, pray you avoid it. I warrant your honour. Be not too tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. So the action to the word, the word to the action. With this special observance, that you all step not the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of the thing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as twere the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the times form and pressure. Now, this overdone or contrary off, it would make the unskillful laugh, cannot but make judicious grief, the censure of the which one must, in your allowance, all weigh a whole fear of others. Oh, there be players that I have seen play, and heard others praise, and that highly, not to speak it profanely, that neither having the accent of Christians, nor the gait of Christian, pagan nor no man, it's so strutted and bellowed, that I stopped, thought some of nature's journeymen had made men, and not made them well. They imitated humanity so abominably. I, well, I we have reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Uh, reform it altogether. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them, but any of them that will themselves... <clears throat> For there be of them that will themselves laugh, to serve some quantity of barren spectators to laugh too, though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous. It shows the most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. Go, make you ready. How now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen too, and that presently. Did the players make haste? Will you two help the hasten them? Aye, my lord. Oh, Horatio. Here, sweet lord, at your service. Horatio, thou art in as just a man as e'er my conversation broke with all. Oh, my dear lord, nay, hey, do not think I flutter. For what advancement may I hope from thee that no revenue has for thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? No, let the candied tongue look absurd pomp, and crook the pregnant hinges of the knees where thrift may, where thrift may fall off on you. Dost thou hear? Since. Dost thou hear? Since my dear soul was mistress of a choice, and could have men distinguish, her election has sealed thee for herself. For thou hast been, as one in suffering all, suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards has ta'en with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger sound and spot she plays. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I, in my heart of heart, as I do thee. <clears throat> Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I pity when thou seest that act of worth, even with the very comment of thy soul. Observe, my uncle. I will. Uh, mm, I, uh, if his occulted guilt be not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stiddy. Give him needful note. For I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face. And after, we will both our judgments join in censure of the scene. Well, my lord, if you steal aught whilst this player is playing escape detecting, I will pay the theft. They are coming to the play. I must be idle. True place. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent fit. The chameleon's dish. I eat the air. Promise crowned. You cannot feed Capon so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. <laughs> My lord, you say you played in the one. You say you played in the university. Uh, my lord, you played once at the university. You say that did I, my lord? I was accounted a good actor. And what did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed at the Capitol. Brutus killed me. Hmm. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital cap there. Be the players ready. Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. Here's nothing more attractive. Oh, you mark that. Lady, shall I lie on your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. You think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair fault to lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? No thing. You are merry, my lord. Who, I? Aye, my lord. Oh, God, you're only jig maker. 
What should a man do but be merry? For look at how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within his two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long? Nay, then let the devil wear a black fur. I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens, died two months ago and not forgotten yet. And there's hope a great man's memory may outlive half a year. But by a lady must build churches then, or else they suffer not thinking on, with the hobby horse, with the hobby horse, whose epitaph is for O, oh, for O, oh, the hobby horse is forgot. This, my lord. Mary, this is Mishing Malika. It means mischief. We like to show imports the argument of the play. Uh, we should know about this fellow. The players cannot keep counsel, they'll tell all. Will you tell us what the show meant? Ah, you're only sure that you'll show him. Be not you ashamed to show, he'll not ashamed to tell you what it means. <laughs> you are not, you are not. I'll mark the play. For us and for our tragedy, here, stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing, patience. A prologue of the posy of a ring. It is brief, my lord, as woman's love. <clears throat> Four thirty times hath Phoebus heart gone round. Neptune sought wash and tell us all the ground. And thirty dozen moons with borrowed sheen about the world of time's twelve thirty three. Since love our hearts and hymen did our hands unite commutual in most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count o'er ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late. So far from cheer and from your former state that I distrust you. Yet, though I distrust, discomfort you with nothing must. For women's fear and love hold quantity, in neither aught or in extremity. Now what my love is, proof hath made you known. And as my love is sized, my fear is so. Where love is great, the littlest doubts are fear. Where little fears grow great, great love is there. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind, honored, beloved, and happy, one is kind. For husband shalt thou, oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. That's one word. The instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead. When second husband kisses me in bed. <clears throat> oh, uh, I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine, off we break. Purpose is but the slave to memory, of violent birth but poor validity, which now, 
like fruit unripe sticks on the tree, but fallen unshaken when they mellow be. Most necessary it is that we forget to pay ourselves, but to ourselves is death. But to ourselves in passion, we propose, the passion ending doth the purpose lose. The violence of either grief or joy, their own inactions with themselves destroy. Where joy must revel, grief doth most lament. Grief joys, joy grieves, on slender accident. This world is not for I, nor tis not strange, that even our loves should with our fortunes change. For tis a question left us yet to prove, whether love be fortune, or else fortune love. The great man down, you mark his favorite flies. The poor advanced makes friends of enemies. And hitherto doth love on fortune tend, for who not needs shall never lack a friend. And who in want a hollow friend doth try, directly seasons him his enemy. <clears throat> but, orderly to end where I begun, our wills and fates do so contrary run that our desires still are overthrown. Our thoughts are ours, their ends none of our own. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to me give food, nor heaven light. Sport and repose lock from me day and night. To desperation turn my trust and hope. An anchor's cheer in prison be my scope. Each opposite that blanks the face of joy, meet what I would have well, and it destroy. Both here and hence, pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. I should break it now. <laughs> Tis deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and then I would beguile the tedious day of sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? Uh, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offence in it? Oh no, they do but jest, poison and jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? The Mousetrap. Mary, how? Drop it. This play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago's the wife, uh, the Duke's name is wife Baptista. You should see her not. It's a knavish piece of work, but what about Your Majesty and we that are free souls that touches us not, but the gold jade wince. Our withers are unrung. <coughs> uh, this is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are as good as a chorus, my love. You are as good as a chorus, my lord. I get a turtle between you and your lover, that to the puppet, darling. You are keen, my lord, you are keen. It would cost you a groaning to take off mine edge. Still better, and worse, so you mistake your husbands. Begin, murderer pox, leave thy damnable faces and begin. Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit, and time agreeing. Confederate season, else no creature seen. Thou mixed your rank. Of midnight weeds collected, with Hackett's ban, thrice blasted, thrice infected, thy natural magic and dire property, unwholesome life usurp immediately. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. The story is extant and written in very choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. <gasps> the king rises. Fight it with false fire. How fares, my lord? Give all the play. Give me some light. Away! Lights! 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 Why, let the stricken deer go with the heart on gold and play, for some must watch while some must sleep, so it runs the world away. For not this, sir, and if the feathers, if the rest of my fortune turn Turk with me, with two provincial roses on my raised shoes, get me a fellowship and a cry of players, half a share, a whole and I, and thou dost know, Damien dear, this round dismantled was, of Jove himself, and now reigns here a very, very... peacock. <laughs> oh, you might have rhymed. <laughs> Horatio, I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pound. Did you perceive? Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of the poisoning, I did very well note him. Ah, ah, come, some music. Come, the chorus. For if the king like not the comedy, why then, but like he likes it not, pretty. Come, some music. Good my lord, vouchsafe me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. Aye, sir, what of him? He's in his retirement, marvellous distempered. With drink, sir? No, my lord, with collar. Oh, your wisdom would chug. Your wisdom should show itself more richer to signify this to the doctor, for for me to put him to his purgation would perhaps plunge him into far more collar. Good my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I am pain, sir. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, has sent me to you. You are welcome. Oh, good my lord, this courtesy is not of the right read. If you shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. Sir, I cannot. 
What, my lord? Make you a horse and answer to my wit's disease. <laughs> but, sir, such answers as I can make, you shall command, or rather, as you say, my mother. Therefore, no more but to the matter, my mother, you say? Then thus she says, your behavior has struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, a wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. There is no sequel at the heels of this mother's admiration. In part, she desires to... I'm dead, dead. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. You shall obey. Was well, she ten times our mother? Have you any further trade with us? Uh, my lord, you once did love me. And you still, by these pickers and stealers, Good, my lord, what is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door of your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend. Uh, sir, um, I like advancement. How can that be? When you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark. Aye, sir, but while the grass grows, uh, the proverb is something must be. Ah, the recorders, let me see. To withdraw with you. <coughs> Why do you go about to recover the wind of me, as if you would drive me to a toil? Uh, oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not well understand that. <laughs> Will you play upon this pipe? Uh, my lord, I cannot. I pray you. Uh, believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. <laughs> I know no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your fingers and thumb, give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. <whistles> Look you, these are the stops. Uh, but these cannot recommend to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, excellent voice in this little organ, yet cannot you make it speak. Splat, do you think that I'm easily played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, that you can fret me, and you cannot play upon me. Oh, God bless you, sir. My lord. The queen would speak with you, I am present. Uh, do you see on a cloud that's almost in the shape of a camel? By the mass, it is like a camel indeed. Methinks it is like a weasel. It is back like a weasel, or like a whale. Very like a whale. But I'm going to come to my mother by and by. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friends. Now the very witching time of night, when churchyards yawn, and hell itself leaves out contagion to this world. Now might I drink, now, now could I drink, mm, now could I drink hot blood, and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look soft as my mother, O oh, heart, lose not my nature, let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom, let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul under the hypocrites. Now in my words, some ever should be shent. To give them seals, never my soul consented. 